Hi, welcome to the workshop. Today I'm going to be showing you the basic tools you will need for water gilding. We're going to start with the gilder's cushion um, or gilder's pad, sometimes referred to. So this came with a what's called a windshield. Now that's made of parchment. Now some gilders take their book of gold and shake the gold out. Now the windshield is there to stop that gold blowing away. Now for me that's never made sense. The gold is flat in the book and you want it flat on your pad so to mess it all up never appealed to me. So I've got a bit of a top tip here. This here which is actually that very top edge of a latex glove. Now that's basically just a really soft elastic band. It's rounded so you can put that over the top there just just at the top there. Get your book of gold, fit it on, and then every page you can tuck, tuck under. Now that means when you bring your gold down, it's flat, it's already in the book, you haven't got that hassle of trying to straighten gold out because you've put it in the windshield. So that's how I attach my gold to this book. Now you've probably noticed under here there's some straps. Now this one here is a hand strap. Now that's so I can put my hand in while I'm working. Now there are two types. You can have a what's called a tabletop or a handheld. Now if you're right or left-handed this strap can go, you know, I'm right-handed so it goes on my left hand. If you're left-handed it would go on your right hand. There's also a strap here for your knife to be fitted into. So if you're standing up working which I often do, I find it easier to gild while I'm standing up. This is much easier than having it sometimes on the bench. But I can turn this into a bench, um, bench pad because I do that. You know, so if you think you might be more comfortable holding it, just get one with straps on the back. But they do come with a thumb strap. Now this one here is the Colmer black and it just has this little hole here which your thumb goes in and I can't get used to that I can't I can't get comfy there's there's no way of it just doesn't feel right and if you don't feel comfortable when you're gilding you're not going to be gilding well also with this colner pad I bought it because it's black it, I thought it looked quite nice within weeks of starting to work on it it went all fluffy so every time you use your knife to cut the gold, this suede on here, there's a really high pile on it. You can see all this fluff here. And what that meant was my gold is so thin that it was attaching to the pad and not coming off. So I do keep this and I use it for silver leaf, but I'll never ever use this for gold and I really would not recommend getting one of these Colner ones, even though it's black and it's quite nice, but it's useless to me really. Yeah, if you're buying a pad, I'd go for one with a hand strap and a knife strap. Try and avoid the thumb strap. That's my personal preference, I suppose, but I find it easier to put my thumb here and grip my pad like that and have my knife there that I can just get it and cut it. So that's the pad. So this is the Gilder's knife. It's a stainless steel knife. Um, this is um, a single edge. So it's just sharpened on this edge. And when I say sharpened, you know, as a knife, it doesn't cut anything. It doesn't cut me, but it will cut the gold. Um, I've never needed a double edged. Um, I don't really see the point. Um, but yeah, it's just a, a basic knife. As I say, it's not sharp, but I do occasionally need to sharpen it when you're cutting and it drags at your gold. I guess a piece of 320 wet and dry and just a couple of goes over, wipe the dust off that's it it's good to go again. Next we've got the Gilder's tip. Um, this is made of squirrel hair um, mounted on some card. It's really thin. You can get synthetic. Um, I've never tried a synthetic. I've always used this squirrel hair um, because it, it, I've never uh, needed to try anything else. It works perfectly for me. The size of this is 90 mil by 50 mil. Now that 50 mil is half of a leaf of gold. 
Um, I don't often lay bigger sheets than that. Um, it's very, very rare I'll need to lay a full sheet. Um, you'd need a much longer tip if you wanted to lay uh, full, full sheets. Um, but this, um, all per this is basically, I've used this for absolutely years. I did a few years ago get this slightly smaller one, same length, but only 25 mil. As you can see, I haven't trimmed the card on this one and it's getting a bit frayed at the end there because that, that gets tucked in your hand gets in the way. This, I've started using this for getting into um, bits where I, I need to bend this and I don't really want to start bending this so for smaller pieces of gold this is brilliant but for years I got away with just using that. And finally if you're doing water gilding you'll want to be doing some burnishing. So this is an agate stone burnisher uh, this shape is called dog's tooth. Now they did used to actually use dog's teeth. Uh, this is, as I say, an agate stone. And I think this is a 24. Um, the, the style and the shape is referred to as a 24. Now I have got these other burnishers. Um, I've tried to get more pointy ones and that was for a very, very specific job. And I never used them again. Um, so again, this absolutely universal for me. I can use it for absolutely anything. I've got quite a wide bit there and a narrower bit there. That's all I've ever needed. So your pad, your knife, your tip and your burnisher are your very specific water gilding tools that you will need. Other things you may come across um, a gilder's mop, a really soft again squirrel hair brush. Now that's for sort of tamping down the gold or some people use it to put the gilding lacquer on. I've got one, never used it. What I prefer, this is my gilding lacquer. You obviously need a pot. Um, I just have a really soft brush that can hold water. You know, a standard brush, so a watercolour brush or anything like that. So that's, that's all you need. So that's really standard. And then I just get um, a little ball of cotton wool and what this is meant to do to press down the gold. I've, I've found that doesn't have enough pressure for me. It doesn't get rid of the air bubbles. But when I press down with this, all my air bubbles go. So of cotton wool, that's, um, that's all you need. Right, so that was the four basic tools that you will need for water gilding. We'll leave a link in the description below um, for where you can buy these tools. Um, then if you've got all the gear and no idea, like me 20 years ago, I will be doing some more videos, some how-to for gilding, um, restoration, etc. So if you'd like to see them, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you.